Hello everyone, this video will talk to you about Gorka earthquake that happened in 2015 in Nepal. This is an example then of an earthquake that's happened in an LIC or a lower income country. You'll need this one then on your exam in the section A, so natural hazards of paper one. And in particular, the spec says you have to compare a case study from an LIC to a HIC. So this video will obviously help you with the LIC part and you need to use the video about Tohoku to help you with the HIC part. So if we start then by having a little look at the facts in this case of this earthquake. Now this earthquake was a 7.8 magnitude and that's 7.8 that's measured on the Richter scale. Here, what we've got happening is our earthquake is approximately 80 kilometers northwest then of the capital. And the capital in this case is Kathmandu. Our plate boundary here, if we have a little look, we've got the Himalayas in the middle, so some lovely fog mountains. So we've got one plate, our Eurasian plate, travelling this way. And then we've got our Indian plate, travelling this way. So both of our plates, in this case, are pushing right towards each other. And it's that pushing towards each other that causes this uplift. So the pressure builds and builds and builds. Now in this case, the pressure built so much that eventually when it was released, that's what caused us to have the earthquake. Now, if we think about what the spec wants you to know, it wants you, first of all, to talk about effects. So if we list that here on one side. And second of all, it wants you to talk about responses. So things that happened afterwards. And we can break these effects down further. So we can call them primary. So things that happen straight away. And we can also call them secondary. So things that happen later on. So in terms of the big facts for primary and things you would probably want to be able to quote in the exam, well, we saw quite a few deaths, 8,841 to be precise. And to sort of follow on from that, we had 1 million people homeless. And we'll talk about why that's significant very shortly. A lot of the buildings collapsed. And again, infrastructure in an LIC probably isn't the greatest we might say well that's a typical one we'd expect to see that the big thing i think for me is this amount of aftershocks 352 aftershocks now that happens as the plates sort of sink back down into their original place the thing with these aftershocks is we did see another earthquake so we had our first earthquake the thing that's caused all this damage 7.8 in magnitude but it followed up then by a second earthquake. And this one was 7.3 in magnitude. And that happened on the 12th of May, 2015. So we might argue that actually, not only did we have the first earthquake that was really bad and caused us these massive primary effects to start with, that actually here the effects were so much worse than those that were seen in Tohoku because we had this subsequent earthquake that's pretty much the same magnitude. So if we compare our primary effects to our secondary effects, we would say there are, again, some more big devastating impacts that we're going to see. OK, so Everest is here. So Everest was hit. So you might say, well, Everest Base Camp then, here they have the avalanche. So that avalanche was triggered by the earthquake. Again, that contributed to deaths. So 19 people here were killed because of that. Tourism was impacted. The tourism is massive for Nepal. Okay, that makes up 8.9% of their GDP. Again, jobs are impacted. So if we put this down here, let's add that one on. So those people lost their jobs, or 1.1 million. To build on that one then as well, we might say, well, actually, this is impacted or natural resources to some extent. So we could say, well, the earthquake here, in the case of this one, happened just before monsoon season. So just before monsoon season is when rice is planted, and that's sort of the staple food. So two thirds of the population there depend on farming. So the big thing we saw with this earthquake is that stopped all of that from happening. So we did see food shortages. And whilst that's bad for all of the population, for those farmers as well, lost wages so they were unable to earn anything that year from the crops okay so if we make these really clear there's our primary so things that happen straight away 
P's are secondary, so things that are knock-on effects or consequences of something else. So in the exam, they might ask you to weigh up, well, were the primary effects worse than the secondary effects? Or do you think secondary was worse than primary, for one example? So you'd need to be able to compare those key points there. So similarly, we can do this for the responses as well. So responses, we can break down into two categories. So we can say, well, short term, so things that were sort of put right or restored straight away. And then the opposite of that would be long term. So things that are still ongoing or took a while to happen. So if we stick with our short term to start with, the first thing they did then was look for international help. Okay, So we might call that a shorter version here, aid. So that aid then was supplied by the UK Disaster Emergency Committee. So they raised 126, 126 million dollars. So that aid started to support some of the Nepal economy. The next thing that we saw happening was our temporary shelters. So we can add this one up here again. So this is short term, it's happened straight away. So people provided with tents and emergency accommodation. And again, one big thing here, great use of technology, was the Facebook safety feature. Okay, and if you give this a Google, it's actually really interesting. It allowed people to log into their social media account um, and press a button that said they were safe. So therefore, people wouldn't be looking for them. If we compare this then to sort of long term responses, so things that are still ongoing. Well, as of now, we've got 23 areas still needing rebuilding. So we could say, well, actually, one major criticism of the short term aid is, yes, they've been supplied with this $126 million dollars. But actually, has it been invested everywhere if we've still got these 23 areas that need repairing? Or on the other hand, you could argue maybe the damage was so bad that still, yes, they need more cash despite all that money they've been given so far. Again, they were given another follow-up payment. So this time, they had $274 million. Okay, and that was committed eight months after the earthquake. So they didn't get this straight away. However, they still had some investment in repairing their infrastructure. We might say as well, Mount Everest opened again in August 2015. So let's put that down here. So again, allowing tourism. Tourism, we said already, was important, making up 8.9% of the GDP. And as well, they've given some education to farmers. So let's put that in here. Well, why is that important? Well, that's going to help us overcome some of these secondary effects we talked about at the start. So the farmers were able to repair the damage then from the landslides, okay, and therefore be able to look after their crops. They'll be able to get something from the harvest. So if we draw these out again, here's our short-term responses. So things that happened straight away. And here's our long-term responses. So things that took a little bit longer to happen, like some of the extra aid, for example. So a bit like with the primary and secondary effects, you might be asked for a nine marker to compare short and long term responses for the Gorka earthquake. And here you'd need to be critical. You would need to weigh up and sort of say, well, do you think the short term is better or do you think the long term is better? And it's all in that justification of why. So I hope this has been helpful. And as ever, if you've got questions, please ask.